Have you ever tried to cross a busy highway to reach your beautiful destination, but when you go ahead to press one of these pedestrian push button devices, it feels like it takes absolutely forever. You just don't know what to do. Should you press the button again? And then you sit around and wait some more. So you press the button again and again. So it has come to my attention that most people believe that these pedestrian push button devices do absolutely nothing. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you press one of these pedestrian push button devices. So while you may believe that these pedestrian buttons don't do anything, they are actually playing a crucial role into keeping you safe while you travel across a busy intersection. See, without pressing that pedestrian push button device, I would never even get the opportunity to get that walk symbol on on the crosswalk sign so that I can safely cross this busy highway. Once I can make it across to my final destination, now I get to enjoy this beautiful view of the Biloxi Beach. Fun fact, Biloxi Beach is actually the world's largest man-made beach. It originally started as a seawall to protect the highway and surrounding buildings during storm surges of hurricanes. And then for the past hundred years they have been importing sand so that they can make and maintain this beautiful beach you see behind me. But enough of that, let's get back into the main topic of this video and that is if these pedestrian push button devices do anything at all. So if you notice hard enough and you look down here you'll see that there is actually two wires that are connected to this pedestrian button. So what actually happens when you press one of these pedestrian push button devices. Oh, well, lucky for y'all, I have a key to one of these traffic signal controller cabinets and I can show you exactly how that button works. So while you may believe that those buttons aren't even connected to anything, well, they're actually connected straight to this PLC board right here inside of this traffic signal controller cabinet. Cables here are connected to that button from the cabinet through a series of pool boxes. The pool boxes are simply a box that's underground where we can push our conduit in through a conduit, simply a pipe that is usually made out of PVC that we can pull those cables through. So now that we've connected the dots, you can see how these cables here make it from this cabinet itself all the way to each of the pedestrian push button devices on all of these poles. So now you're gonna ask, what is a PLC and how does connecting all those buttons to this board here actually give you the walk indication? Well, it's actually quite simple. You see a PLC is a programmable logic controller which allows you to complete continuity, which is really just connecting point A to point B and it typically completes continuity by using low voltage or even a ground. Now let's recap, our buttons have two wires that connect straight to the buttons and they come all the way back until they connect onto this board here. But this board here recognizes that input you made when you press that button and through this cable here, it connects all the way to this Polera CCU, which is a central computer unit. Now that central computer unit was pretty much irrelevant until the Americans with Disability Act of 1990 came into effect and in which made the standard to these pedestrian push button devices a lot higher for people with disabilities. Over ADA here in a moment, but let's stay focused on how this right here will give you that walk indication out in the field. So we do have some essential ports on the CCU. As you can see, this two wire cable here plugs straight into the CCU, which is this push button PLC board. And then we do have this port here, which is an SDLC port, which if you have the more advanced traffic signal controller cabinets, you can simply plug this straight into the CCU, plug in your PLC wire, and then you could pretty much start setting up your buttons and getting them ready to go. But Mississippi likes to keep their technology tried and true. While we may lose some of the conveniency of the new technology that's out there, we like to have stuff that is proven to work for the next 50 years. Our next very important port is going to be for the pedestrian inputs to the traffic signal controller cabinet. So cable C that you can see here is gonna actually route all the way through, come over to the side here and then drop down and it starts connecting into this side panel. Hopefully won't lose a lot of y'all here, but this is the wiring diagram to that side panel. And you can see on the L block that cable C runs through here and wire A lands on nine wire B lands on 10 and then that cable keeps going down to the Q block where wire C is going to land on 9Q and wire D is going to land on Q10. Now this is where the real magic starts happening. If we look on our side panel and we come up to the L block and we come down to nine, you can see that that cable A is sitting right there on nine and you can see that there is another cable coming out of that terminal block. Now this wire here is going to jump down into a surge protector because we don't want to damage anything inside the cable.
cabinet if a surge happens to happen on that push button. And then it jumps back over to this L block where you can see that there are two wires connected to this terminal block. No, it sounds crazy. So again, from that comes down to the surge protector and then out the surge protector, we connect into the 11 and then the other cable is off of 11 which is going to route itself all the way over and end up connecting into this backboard. My fans that are into PLCs, I know y'all are drooling over this video right now, so don't forget to hit that like button. And hell, if we get 10,000 likes on this video, maybe we'll come out here and unplug this cable that is powering all the license plate readers at this intersection. And that's the little device that is reading the license plates of vehicles traveling underneath this mast arm. My apologies, everybody. Sometimes I get a little distracted. So where were we? We have our cables that are routing up and coming into this backboard. And right here on this backboard, this pin in here is for the phase two approach and the pedestrian detection. So the cable comes from L9 to the surge protector back up to L11 and then from L11 it routes all the way over to this pin here on the backboard. And luckily on these traffic signal controller cabinets we can open up these backboards and then I can show you where that cable goes from there. So we are on pin 10 here on the front side. On the back side you can see on number 10 that we have a small blue cable that is soldered to that pin and it comes down and then it routes over to the right. And that small blue wire that is soldered onto that pin it actually routes over into these protective sleeves that route all the way up and into this traffic signal controller through these cannon plugs this is the brains of the intersection and then over here we do have a malfunction management unit which is pretty much like a nagging wife so if there's ever any issue with the brains or anything with the traffic lights this is going to nag so much that the traffic light doctor is going to have to do a house call and come out and resolve an issue so picture it like this all the wires that make everything work out here on the traffic light are pretty much like your nervous system and all those wires have to come back and connect to your brain which is that traffic signal controller so just how your brain accepts inputs from your nervous system so does the controller when you press that pedestrian push button so i know it's been a journey guys going from all of these buttons and getting all the way back to this cabinet and then all the way to this controller as you can see guys so when you press one of these pedestrian push button devices like we will for phase four Four, you can see that AC ends up highlighted for P call or pedestrian down here call on four which is going to allow you to be put into a queue so once the vehicle times have reached their limits it will then cycle the lights and allow you to get that active crossing so the next time you come up to a pedestrian push button device know that there is some magic happening behind the scenes so that you can safely walk across a busy intersection and it all starts with the first initial press of the button so it doesn't matter if you press the button one time or 8,000 times the moment you press this button it's going to put you in a queue and you will be served that active crossing sign so after watching this entire video i hope that y'all can have a little bit of patience when you press one of them pedestrian push button device and utilize these traffic light systems in the most safe manner possible if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out and subscribe to the traffic light doctor youtube channel where i have hundreds of more videos about the building process and the understanding of traffic light systems